Uh, Ian, you've seen many of these title races over the years. Uh, this could be up there as one of the most fascinating. Well, it looks like it could be a classic and the plot is thickening all the time. I was there at Newcastle ten nights ago when Manchester City got beaten and as Bernardo Silva has said today, at that moment even the City players thought they'd probably blown the title because Liverpool had the chance the next night to go seven points clear. They didn't take that chance mm. and they slipped up again against West Ham United. They're not firing at the moment. Suddenly the momentum shift is towards Manchester City who've gone out and scored a a couple of wins and look to be back to something like their best. Now they have to play Chelsea. The, I think the only sure thing in all this is there will be more twists and turns along the way. Quite a lot of them, I think. On our graphic, Ian, we have Spurs up. Are they relevant in this title race? I think they are, you know, because they're going to get Deli Alley and Harry Kane back pretty soon now. The word I've got from Tottenham today is they're both back in training. Both could be a little ahead of schedule on their return. We were told March. It might be a little before that. And interestingly, they've got to play the top two away from home. So odds not with them having to go away, but they do have that chance to cut the gap and they probably will. Well, they definitely will have Kane and Alley back by then. What do you think, gentlemen? Are those odds changed since Wednesday night? Probably. I know you're fascinated <laughs> by well, these. Well, because I'll tell you why. Because since Wednesday night when we did the show, I, yeah. I, uh, I don't think those odds look like that. And they haven't played. Right. So, well, I, 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 I don't get this. I don't know. I, I Somebody's was... juggling the odds around. I don't know. <laughs> look, uh, look, end it. From, from a neutral's point of view, this is brilliant, isn't it? Mm. We haven't got a horse in this race. It's going to be fun. Yeah. For him. Well, it's going to... Well, <laughs> send old, uh, <laughs> old heart attack. Hey, old heart attack Harry over here. Oh, but... <laughs> Give a mouth to mouth by the time it gets to what? Yeah, I, I don't April. think that's in my contract. No, that's not in my Always Look, you three. Surely Liverpool tomorrow, right? They can't stuff up against Bournemouth. Uh, no. They it, can't. They just, they just can't afford to stuff up tomorrow. I okay. think it's, a, it's, it's an important game for them. OK, well, let, if we take a look at the schedule, you can see how, who everyone is facing. And as you mentioned, for, for Liverpool, it's Bournemouth. Uh, Spurs have less, which you would imagine would be a banker. Obviously, the big match is Manchester City against uh, Chelsea. Yep. Uh, you take a look at the odds. Manchester City uh, are favourites to take all three points against a strange old Chelsea side. But Chelsea did, of course, beat them earlier on in the season, didn't they? So, yeah, but th that was at home. Right. For a start. So it doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't count. doesn't have any relevance in this conversation. Uh, not, well, not, hold on, hold on. Not, since, not since what's happened recently. You know, we... They were in complete and utter turmoil until they were fortunate enough to, to land a home game against Huddersfield last weekend and they won 5-0, which was no, re no great shock. So maybe that's just papered over the cracks there. Yes, they've signed Higuain, which I think is, 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 is going to be beneficial that, that, that puts them in the top four. But right now, are they really in a position where they can go to Manchester City and beat them or take points off them? I don't think they're quite there yet. But at the same time, when these two met at Stamford Bridge, I don't think Chelsea were good enough to beat <clears throat> Manchester City. <clears throat> yet still, what Chelsea did, and did very well on the day, was defend. And defend with the three midfielders sitting just in front of back four and frustrate City. And Eden Hazard uh, kind of led the charge from the front alongside Pedro and William, I think it was. Um, and, and that result... Came, came out of nowhere. And so you, you sleep on Chelsea here at your peril. Now, all things being even, I, I think City win this and, and probably win it comfortably. But let's not take this for granted at all. So they're not sleeping with it on the peril? I'm just saying, well, <laughs> they won't. They won't. We could sit he here and say that if we want. I liked how we dismissed the Liverpool Bournemouth game there. It's not a big game, it's a huge game. <laughs> Well, it's on a little later on my agenda. Oh, here, I didn't look at the running about. order again. I must look at the running order. Uh, that, that's well, all... The one thing we need to forget about... No, oh, the one thing we need to remember about Chelsea, right? And there's no other way to put it. At home, they're a different animal than they are away from home. They've been soft on the road, right? right? The only team in the top half of the table they've beaten is Watford. Right. They've beaten, us, beaten some other sides, but they're all bottom half teams. You know, they've been beaten easily by uh, Tottenham and they drew at West Ham and... You know, lost to Arsenal. So the only, the only side that they're beating is Watford in the top half. They haven't travelled well. Mm. They're out of their comfort zone when they go away. And now they're playing, you know, well, one of the two best teams in the league. And he's got decisions to make again. You know, Rudiger was out last week. Christensen come in. Does he change it? But I think the one thing we do know, for God's sake, we've talked about it, we know he's going to play 4-3-3. Three, three. Right. What we don't know is what Guardiola's <laughs> going to come up with. We know what Sarri's going to do. And the question is, on the road, 
you know, is that back four going to be operating well enough to, to thwart what City have, mm. which is the best midfield to front probably in the league? And is, and we've all talked about them, Jorginho on the ball, that's fine. But when they don't have as much possession as they have at Stamford Bridge, can he do the defensive duties yeah. to thwart all the midfield guys that play narrow for Man City? That's a big question. Uh, Steve, this is fine, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> yes, it should be. <laughs> How that changed, eh? Well, it's an important game. It's, a, it's an, an important, important game. <laughs> it is. It's you a... can bet your bottom dollar it's well, an no, important not, game. Not... Hmm. For the, for the psychological <laughs> reason as much as anything else. You know, after this game, they get a break. Yep. Um, and considering the results they've had recently, particularly at Anfield, if they can put a, 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 a real, show us the real Liverpool in this game, then they can score goals and get everybody back on, on an even keel. Because right now, everybody's kind of asking questions because of those recent results, particularly at Anfield. Yeah. So to be able to have a good performance, score plenty of goals, go and have a break and everybody's happy and then come back, and then you face your, your Bayerns, and then you face your Man Uniteds, and then you follow that with, with three games again that we think they should win against the Burnleys and Everton and Watford. Uh, what do you make of what's going on at Liverpool and looking ahead to this game? Uh, Steve, he's talking about the psychology of it. Ian. Um, Liverpool against Bournemouth. Well, I saw Bournemouth last week and they don't have Callum Wilson at the moment and they don't have the excellent youngster David Brooks. They're both out for about a month. They put in a limp display at Cardiff. I think it's the ideal fixture, really, I think, for Liverpool to get themselves back on song. And, and the word is that Henderson is near to fitness and Wijnaldum too. And even uh, Alexander-Arnold, the young fullback, who I think they've missed recently. So, yeah, Liverpool, I think should win that one and maybe just regain a bit of momentum. Uh, you're the only one, I think, who picked them to go all the way and win it at the start of the season, Ian. Are you sticking with that? Yeah, I'll stick with it. They've got, they've got the game in hand. They're having a little bit of a blip at the moment, but doesn't every team on their way to, to the title?